welcome to Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to be showing off the Hereford versus map today. It's a best of two map and the teams take turns at attacking and defending an objective. I'm joined on my team by a variety of names you may recognise, including Jack Frags, who I played Rainbow Six with at E3. On the opposing team, I have names such as Vic Star and Allier, which is a terrifying combo to go up against, I will add. Um, Vic Star mercilessly killed a lot of people, and you'll see that in this video. But arguably, Jack did exactly the same. So I, I think our teams were reasonably balanced in the end. It was quite, it was quite good. Once we all knew the map, it was going really well. This is quite early one in our matchup that we did. We had, you know, the best of two or three of these rounds. And so by the end of it, they were quite even. But I thought I'd show you this one because it does give you a demonstration of how things can go wrong, but also how different um, support systems can work as a player. Now, we're just doing our sort of team loadout. The Blitz is one of the newest characters that has been announced. The Blitz has a very interesting shield, so it's like the Montagna or the Mountain, which is the class that I'm going to be playing. So it's the guy with the big shield who can protect people and is quite slow and heavy armoured. The Blitz is also slow and has heavy armour. However, they have a flashbang on their shield effectively so they can blind enemies. It's quite an interesting device. Moving on, let's talk about the preparation phase. You need to locate the biohazard container. The preparation phase is the first 45 seconds where you're all drones. It gives you a little bit of an advantage because it allows you to go into the base, zoom around and see if you can find not only the objective, but also other players mark them and see what defense they have as well. Good work. The biohazard container has been located. You want to look and see if you can find any sort of defenses they're setting up, because if you can find that or you can mark them, it will give you that advantage when you're going in. You know which Ten places are bad and which places are good. Now, you only have a certain amount of time, so once that runs out, you're then Five put back into your bodies and you have to begin the assault. Proceed to biohazard container location. So we are starting as the team that's doing the assault. We will then become the defending team. Now this one is over quite quickly because the defending team make a very big mistake, which I'll show you in a minute. But what we're doing is we're slowly ambling our way towards the building which we're going to go into. Now I am of course surrounded by COD and Battlefield experts in this game, so they don't feel that they need to be as team orientated as perhaps Kim and I would be, who are novices and a little bit, you know, we need a bit of backup. He's already claimed one life by just sticking a shotgun through a window and he's going to breach and go in because he feels confident enough that he can do that. And it does pay off very well for him. So I thought, you know, some of the guys have gone around the other side. I thought I'd go through the main entrance. I've got a shield. Perhaps this will allow me to, you know, go up the stairs a little bit clearer out. I do actually spot on the side here, on the left, there is some sort of device that would mess us up. But it doesn't matter because the round has been won. It was over that quickly. Why was it over? Because the objective was secured. Because the enemy team, the defending team, made the mistake of wandering away from the objective. So it's not just that you kill everyone. If you leave your objective, you can lose. So if you don't plan ahead and you don't make sure you've always got someone covering the objective, when you're trying to sneak around, you know, maybe try and flank the attackers, then sometimes it can really bite you in the ass. And this specific time, it did. We are now going into round two, which is when we defend. You'll notice it says match point as well, because it's best of two. Now, there are a few classes that may seem new to you. I was looking at the bandit at the start, who has this awesome barbed wire, and a few other funky things. He's got shock wire as well, which I, if I recall correctly, did win as one match, because someone walked backwards into it and it electrocuted them to death. So there are really awesome, awesome random things that different classes have that are really cool. I've gone for the castle, which is a slightly quicker version of the shield bearer that I had in the attacking phase. It's got a deployable shield again, but I felt comfortable having something that was a little bit lighter because I want to be able to move around as a defender. I can also do barricades, but I didn't actually end up doing barricades because the guys, literally between us, we had so many barricades and barbed wire, it was absurd. And um, they didn't, you know, in the end they breached in a way that I don't think the barricades would have helped us with anyway. So we have chosen our objective to be in the basement. This is an obvious place which would be dodgy. So we are going to put up a barricade. So this is 
I've got one of these as well. Now you will notice in the bottom left hand corner just then a little drone shot passed. That means that both of us and the barricade have been spotted and we'll also have been marked if they've done their job properly, meaning that they can see us through walls and they can find out where we are. Um, this is the deployable shield, I've just popped it down, but again then I've picked it up and moved on because I thought what's the point in hanging out here, I'm on my own, I want to keep an eye on this door, don't get me wrong, because if they want to come through there it's quite an obvious place to go, but I don't want to be that close just in case they do stuff. My guys are next door, we're all sort of chilling out, it's okay, barbed wire is being put down, I believe that's the barbed wire by the bandit. Jack has already spotted Ali A, I think that's a breach back there, who the hell knows? No one knows what's going on at this point, we're all just like, where are they coming from? Luckily, someone has shut that door down by barricading it, which is the right move. So, I'm sort of chilling in here with Jack, because I know, I know Jack, and I trust Jack, and I don't really want to die. I know it's inevitable, but I thought we'll stick together. So, I come out into the hallway, I'm keeping an eye on that door. That is my one mistake, because I see that movement, I'm like, oh, but actually, it's behind me that I need to worry about, because there's a little shit on the stairs. Sorted him out though, didn't I? Oh yes, and Jack caught someone as well. I don't know which direction they came from, I assume they were upstairs as well. Now, that means we've taken two of them out, there's three of them left. So Jack goes to investigate, and obviously shoots someone else. So that's three down, but then Vic turns around and kills two guys because he has claimed the priority position at the top of the stairs and he gets me as well because that is such a narrow space and it's a really good space to work in terms of killing people and Vic knows that because of COD and things like that. So when you die you get this lovely death replay that shows you what you've done wrong and then it kicks you into support mode if you're a defender. If you're an attacker it will kick you into the drones and then it allows you to use the cameras that are sticking around to mark different people. You can also watch your friends like I have there or you can swap back to the cameras, so I can see him there. Now, what I should have done is I should have marked him, and then I can mark him for my friends. Much like when we were zooming around as the drones and you could mark people, you can also mark people using the cameras. So, and you, obviously you can still talk to people as well. So I'm going, guys, he's on the first floor, he's on the first floor, he, he's just run out of the kitchen. I don't know where he is now, though. He might still be up there. So you can mark him. But, again, they have to stay still long enough as well, which is sometimes an issue if they're zooming back and forth. The best thing we can do is just wait. And because we're the defenders, we have the luxury of waiting. We don't have anywhere to go. We don't have anyone to attack and kill. There's more of us alive as well. So we just have to wait for Vic to reveal himself, come out and be like, yeah, I need to kill you guys in order to claim the objective. And he realises, he must realise, there's a minute to go and there's two guys there. I'm looking on all the cameras going, where am I? Like, where is he? Where is he? Can we find him? He's still not on the second floor. I'm keeping him on the stairs because, you know, movement up and down the stairs, he's got to go through them unless he goes like that. And there he is. And he's actually just killed a guy, so it's 1v1. Luckily, luckily, that was the point at which he walked into that electrical barbed wire that I told you about that the bandit has. You've got an end of round replay. He just backs into it and dies because he doesn't realise what it is. And amazingly, that won us the game. So there you go, guys. That is a demonstration of the Hereford map from Rainbow Six. I hope it shows you a little bit of what the game would be like, you know, if you were going to play it with your friends, if you were going to play it as someone who was going and who wasn't a seasoned pro at FPS shooters. And I hope it shows you like the cool little quirks that you can do, you know, behind the scenes to help out your guys, even if you end up getting shot almost immediately. Thank you very much for watching. Please do have a look at the other Gamescom content. It'll be in the video description below. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.